G'day. Welcome to Bootlosophy, and if you're new here, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I'm filming on, the Wajit people of Nungabuja. Now, I'm really excited because I'm going to do this unboxing of these new pair of Jim Green boots. Uh, it arrived in the mail and I've uh, kept them unopened for a few days ready to get to this unboxing and I'm really excited, so let's go. And uh, out of the postage box you get the normal Jim Green box with the Jim Green uh, frog which I understand is indigenous to the area where Jim Green operates, Jim Green the Boot Company. Jim Green the Frog is indigenous to where Jim Green the Boot Company operates <laughs> um, and is fodder for fish over there. So what comes in the box? A very nice boot. Let's get into that. Uh, a card about Jim Green. The legend was born. Some boot care tips. Uh, some... Uh, marketing about the African Ranger, which I think is probably their most uh, famous and popular boot. So two nice cards and then the boot itself. So taking the first one out, I think I might actually take both out. Oh, and as usual, they have a Jim Green sticker, which is pretty good. Now let me just move the box out of the way. And take a look at these boots. This is the Jim Green Numzan, N-U-M-Z-A-A-N. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of the blurb about the Numzan. Um, you can see, in fact, that's a very iconic shape for the uh, cap toe on Jim Green boots. Um, you know, rather than being straight across, they do have that curve to them, which sort of identifies them as Jim Green boots. So let me read a bit of a blurb from their website. Uh, we have listened to our customers and are thrilled to bring you the Nomzan boot, crafted with the Jim Green touch for top quality, comfort and formality on every occasion. Derived from the Zulu word Nomzan, meaning the head of a family or a leader, we proudly present the Nomzan boot as the distinguished <coughs> chief in our collection, inspired by our Baobab Boab, Baobab. In Australia, we have the same tree as the uh, Baobab, but we call it the Boab, which is why I'm having difficulty pronouncing this. Uh, so it protects a heritage feel and features our new veg tan leather, making it our most stylish boot to date. The Nomzan boot boasts a double-lasted layer upper that's 2 millimeters lined with uh, 1.2 millimeters of calf skin. This is then finished off with a genuine toe cap, so in fact, there's three layers under there, uh, being the upper's leather, the toe cap, and the lining. Uh, genuine toe cap, making this boot sport over five mils of leather around the toes. The heel and the toe area uh, is uh, also reinforced with thermoplastic toe puffs for added support. This is paired with ankle high lace-up system and a bellows tongue. We'll get into that. Uh, this is using Jim Green's ASHM last, allowing for a fashion look while still accommodating a wider foot. Uh, the ASHM last is a standard width for those with wide feet or wearing thicker socks. Perhaps you need to go up a half size from your normal Jim Green, which I always find is true to size. Good news doesn't stop there. We've gone the extra mile and incorporated a leather lasting board, leather midsole and a resin runner, a total of a eight mils of uh, leather that will gradually mold to the shape of your feet. All this comes together with the innovative frog grip sole, making a new stride forward. Uh, the weight of the boots is 3.62 pounds in a uh, size 9 US, and the laces are uh, 59 inches. So let's take a look at these boots. So it is their new veg tan leather, and you can feel the temper is actually uh, quite firm, as in typical veg tan. It doesn't give off an immediate veg tan leather smell. Uh, that may be through processing. Uh, the last is meant to be office worthy. I reserve judgment. <laughs> I, I, I think it's, it's probably still an outdoorsy boot to me. Uh, I'm not going to be wearing that in an accountant's office or a lawyer's office, I don't think. Uh, it has antique 
brass, I believe, uh, four eyelets and two speed hooks, and these look very familiar, just like the African Ranger. Uh, it's a stitch down construction with super thick uh, thread being used for the stitch down, and you can see the um, stitches really are extremely secure in there. Uh, what strikes me almost immediately, visually, is the, the uh, number of leather pieces that make this up, which make this quite a unique uh, boot. Uh, you have that toe cap, which I said has an iconic curve to it, uh, unlike most toe caps, which are straight. But you also have the quarters leather, which sort of stops there, and then there's a collar leather, and then there's the uh, back stay, which doesn't go all the way up. It is quite a unique design. I also like the standard, uh, very innovative, I think, Jim Green bellows system, where the bellows, there's like two uh, uh, leather facings here, one which the uh, laces go through and one which protects the inside of the boot. And to that is gusseted the bellows tongue. And the way the bellows tongue works in the Jim Green boots that I'm used to, is they kind of fold inside this second facing inside there and they they fall into a um, extremely secure water retentive water water resistance and extremely secure from dust and dirt and all sorts of things that can get into your boot it can be quite uncomfortable when you first put it on because there's a, a hell of a lot of leather is digging into you um, but in 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 time, as the leather softens and breaks in, uh, it becomes extremely uh, protective. Um, I would not say extremely comfortable. I do have an issue with uh, Jim Green lasts in that I find their toe boxes are quite low profile and I'm always um, constantly aware of my toes uh, meeting leather there. It's not painful, but it is not I would say relaxingly comfortable. Uh, the the um, heel cup slopes in a little bit, which I like, and in time as it breaks, I expect this to, to cup even more. There is elastic here, so if necessary, I might hit this with a heat gun and try and bend it a little bit, because often that's what um, cuts into my Achilles tendon. We shall see. Thickness of the sole, I'm very impressed by that. Uh, leather midsole, a leather lasting board inside. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can see it, but with the African Ranger, for example, you can see that it's obviously uh, a kind of fiber board, not a leather board, but a fiber board, uh, which Jim Green says is actually uh, much better than, than leather board because it's, it's uh, more durable. And then it's covered by a uh, comfort uh, sock liner. Uh, the leather lining is on the suede side and the tongue, although it's a double layer, has the suede side showing as well. Other boot, I do like the laces because they're, they, they're quite elastic and that means you can cinch them up really nicely. Taking the other boot to look at, uh, construction quality. not a single stitch out of place. What is it? Triple stitch there, triple stitch there, double stitch there, firm, firmly stitched in the back stay, uh, triple stitched on the toe cap. Yeah, this is not going to fall apart anytime soon uh, until the nuclear winter arrives. So let's get these on foot and see how they fit. So let's get them on. Uh, immediately feel that this is veg tan. The temper uh, is quite firm as soon as you put them in. The fit is good. Um, I generally find Jim Green's fit true to size. So uh, being a South African ex-Commonwealth or currently still Commonwealth country, uh, similar to Australia, they use the UK sizing numbers. So true to size in the UK sizing, I'm seven and a half. 
and these are seven and a half. Uh, that equates to a US 8.5, which is also what I am on the US Brannock device. Uh, laces up really nicely. And the fit, true to size, is really good. Um, my toe is just... A, well, can't, can't bloody feel it because it's so thick full of leather. Uh, my toe is just about there, so... Um, a little less than thumb's width. I can tell immediately that there's a little more um, pro, uh, uh, um, height in this last. Um, I think the profile is probably higher than the African Ranger, where in the African Ranger I feel the big toe and the little toe sort of um, in contact with the toe cap. Not here. That's much better. And gosh, it's firm. That sole um, is with all that leather underneath my foot, is going to take a while to break in. Holy cow. Get the other one on. Oh, that fits in really nicely. And I do love the tongue. As I said, you've got this um, double lace facing with the tongue, the gusset folding under, uh, over and under one of them. Um, just makes it a lot more uh, resistant to dust and dirt and mud. Um, so... As a dress boot, ooh, I'm not sure, but definitely as an outdoor boot, as a hiking boot, um, I think four kudos. If we cinch it tight so that my ankles are well supported, I tell you what, I'll, I'll cuff the je my jeans up, my RM Williams made in Australia jeans up, um, so you can get a better view of the boot. First impression, solid, tough veg tan leather. That's going to last me a long time. Uh, the all leather underneath sole construction is going to be hard to break in. I'm already feeling some heel slip, but I just get the feeling these will be worth it. So they are very firm on my feet, but they're supportive. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of an old school uh, all leather hiking boot, which is so solid. No, no, you know what this reminds me of? Um, I was in national service, and in those days, in the 70s, we were issued with British Army uh, ammo boots, and they were stiff. And on top of those ammo boots, you put on putties, like gaiters, but you wrap them around your ankle and they kept your ankle stiff. And this is what this feels like. Very supportive. Uh, I think this is going to take some breaking in to do, but we shall see. Very nice. I do like them. I do like the feel of them, even though I'm <laughs> in the back of my mind, I'm slightly worried about breaking, uh, particularly with my so many boots. I don't know how much time and effort I can invest in these, but I'm going to give it a damn good go because I think these are going to be my favorite outdoor go hiking in the bush shoes. All right, let's sum up. So a, a, a truly worthy addition, I think, in the uh, range carried by Jim Green. Uh, in, in terms of price, they are selling in the US on the US website, which I'll put a link in uh, to, the, to the site below to the US. Uh, they're selling for US $250, $249, I think, to be exact. This is the walnut model. Uh, on the Australian website, and I'll put a link to that with a .au at the end too, uh, they're on pre-order at the moment, so uh, I think you, you have to wait for your order. Uh, they sell for Australian $350, so uh, really well within the price range for this kind of boot, considering an Iron Ranger uh, sells in Australia for around $500 Australian dollars. So, uh, I, I think this is a, a worthy little boot to look at in that price range. Um, in summary, look, I think this is an excellent addition to, to Jim Green's models. They're Boabab, Boabab, I call it Boab tree. Uh, their, their Boabab model uh, is, is very good looking, but it's definitely a hiking type boot. The African Ranger, probably their best seller, I think, uh, is a low chucker which is very useful for sort of sandy, deserty um, sort of areas. The AR8 is a taller boot, 
I'm not entirely sure most of us need it, to be honest. But this, this suits, I think, this suits my lifestyle. Yeah, I could wear this to the office on an off day when nobody's coming to the office and all I'm doing is wearing it under my desk. Um, but I would definitely wear this to go out. I would definitely wear this to go in the bush. I would definitely wear this to go up north to the uh, indigenous communities that I work in. I would definitely wear this to mining sites where I work uh, uh, at sometimes. It's protective. Uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't meet safety standards, but it is protective in uh, most senses of the word. The leather temper is just phenomenally sturdy and I think is going to be very supportive of the ankle along rough ground. The uh, frog grip sole, reminiscent of a Vibram V-bar sole, but I think of a softer compound because it's, it's really uh, extremely grippy that I've had it on in the last half hour or so, just testing it around. Uh, look, I, I think this is a, a, a worthy add to anyone's collection. So, there you go. I hope you like this unboxing. I will bring you a full review of this after a few months, probably quite a lot of months while I break this in, uh, and then I'll bring you that full review uh, uh, to see what I think of it after I've worn it for a few months. So there you go. I hope you like this review. If you do, click on the like button, uh, and uh, please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you the next time, but do take care before out there, and I'll see you soon.